This video is about the substitution method for evaluating integrals, also known as u substitution. As a first example, let's try to integrate 2x sine of x squared dx. Now sine of x squared is the composition of the function sine and the function x squared. And notice that the function x squared has derivative 2x, which is sitting right here in the integrand. I'm going to make the substitution u equals x squared. And then I'll write du is equal to 2x dx. That's differential notation. To find du, I take the derivative of x squared and then multiply by the differential dx. I can then rewrite the integrand as sine of u, and the 2x dx becomes du. After making this substitution, I can integrate because the antiderivative of sine of u is negative cosine of u. And I'll add on the constant of integration. I'm not finished yet. My original problem was in terms of x, and now I've got a function in terms of u. So let's substitute back in. Since u is equal to x squared, I can replace that, and I have my final answer. To verify that this final answer is correct, that it really is the antiderivative of what we started with, let's take the derivative of our answer and make sure we get back the function 2x sine of x squared. If we take the derivative of negative cosine of x squared plus c, then we get the derivative of a constant is just 0, so we have the derivative of negative cosine that's equal to sine of the inside function x squared times the derivative of the inside function using the chain rule. And we do, in fact, get back to the integrand that we started with. Notice that we use the chain rule when taking the derivative to check our answer. Let's try some more examples of u substitution. When looking for what to substitute as u, it's good to look for a chunk that's in the integrand whose derivative is also in the integrand. It's also good enough to just have a constant multiple of the derivative in the integrand. So in the first example, we might use the chunk 1 plus 3x squared as our u. The derivative of that expression is 6 times x. And even though 6 times x isn't completely in the integrand, we do have a factor of x in the numerator. That's just a constant multiple away from the derivative of 6x. So let's write out du, that's going to be 6x dx, and I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as x dx is equal to 1 sixth du. Writing it this way makes it easy to substitute 1 sixth du for x dx, and then in my denominator my 1 plus 3x squared becomes u. I can rewrite this as 1 6 times the integral of 1 over u du, and I recognize that the antiderivative of 1 over u is ln absolute value of u. Substituting back in for u, I get a final answer of 1 6 ln absolute value of 1 plus 3x squared plus c. The absolute value signs are not really necessary in this example since 1 plus 3x squared is always positive. As our next example, let's look at the integral of e to the 7x dx. One chunk we could use here is u equals 7x. If we do that, then du is just 7 dx. And so we have dx is equal to 1 7th du. Substituting in, we have the integral of e to the u times 1 7th du. I can pull the 1 7th out and integrate e to the u to get just e to the u. And substituting in for back for 7x, I get e to the 7x plus c. I encourage you to pause the video to check that these two answers are correct by taking the derivatives. You'll notice that you use the chain rule each time. Next, let's do an example with a definite integral, the integral from e to e squared of ln x over x dx. If we set u equal to ln x, 
then du is the derivative of ln x, that's 1 over x, times dx. This is a much better choice of u than, say, setting u equal to x from the denominator, because then du would just be dx, and when we did the substitution, nothing would really change. For definite integrals, we need to deal with the bounds of integration. Here, e and e squared. We really have two options. Worry about them now, or worry about them later. I'll show you the worry about them now method first. Our bounds of integration, e and e squared, are values of x. As we convert everything in our integral from x to u, we need to convert the bounds of integration from values of x to values of u also. Now, when x is equal to e, u is equal to ln of e, which is 1, just using this equation. Similarly, when x is equal to e squared, u is equal to ln e squared, which is 2. So as I rewrite my integral, I'm going to replace the bounds with 1 and 2, and now my ln x becomes my u and my dx divided by x becomes my du. The integral of u du is equal to u squared over 2, and I evaluate this between the bounds of u equals 2 and u equals 1 to get 2 squared over 2 minus 1 squared over 2, which is 1 half. Notice that when we did the problem this way, we never actually had to get back to our variable x. We stayed in the variable u and evaluated. The second way of dealing with the bounds of integration is to worry about them later. Let's go back to the beginning of the problem, where we were just about to substitute u equals ln x and du equals 1 over x dx. Instead of substituting in for the bounds of integration, I'm going to temporarily ignore them and just evaluate the indefinite integral, ln x over x dx, which I can substitute in as u times du. We can evaluate that to get u squared over 2. Normally we'd have a plus c constant, but since we're ultimately going to be doing a definite integral, we don't really need the constant here. Now, just like when we're doing indefinite integrals, I'm going to get back to the variable x by substituting back in for u. u is ln of x, so I square that and divide by 2. And then I can go back to my original bounds of integration. Those bounds are the x values of e squared and e. Plugging in those bounds, I get ln of e squared, quantity squared, over 2, minus ln of e squared over 2, which evaluates to 2 squared over 2 minus 1 over 2, which is again 1 half. This video gave some examples of u substitution to evaluate integrals. This method works great in examples like this one, where there's a chunk that you can call u whose derivative, or at least a constant multiple of its derivative, is also in the integrand.